We are going to call up uh, John Stover. Welcome and begin when you're ready. Chairman Wiggum, Vice Chair John, Ranking Member Kelly, and members of the Ohio House State and Local Government Committee. My name is John Stover. I'm president of Ohio Value Voters and a board member of Protect Ohio Children. I have read the bill, House Bill 220, 327, that I'd like to speak upon, and I commend the two sponsors, Representative Diane Grindell and Sarah Fowler Arthur. This is a good bill. It addresses Resolution 20 passed last year by the State Board of Education. It addresses the vision caused by teaching and indoctrination of critical race theory in the classroom. It addresses the teaching of the same in state institutions of higher learning. This proposed legislation addresses the area of political subdivision in state agencies. On March 28, 1963, it was Martin Luther King that stated during his I Have a Dream speech, I quote, my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Critical race theory has reached the point where it is heading in a 180 degree opposite direction. Today, critical race theory is taught in many classrooms here in Ohio and the country. You can go to protectohiochildren.com. You will see a uh, heat map that is extremely similar to the map that uh, the governor has for his COVID um, updates. And we have all 600 plus school districts listed there. When I attended public school, Mr. Chairman, growing up in the near west side of Cleveland in the 60s and 70s, students were racially mixed, brown, black, white students from Europe, South America, Mexico, etc. We treated each other with respect. There was never an issue then that critical race theory is attempting to address today in the classroom. Crit critical race theory and systemic racism are mutually exclusive. It's important that we realize that. Critical race theorists disciples believe that systemic racism exists in all facets of life. If you're a white, you have white privilege. Personal uh, history, my father grew up poor in the hills of West Virginia during the Depression. He went to bed many times hungry at night. My mother's father worked 33 years in the coal mines of West Virginia, receiving a miner's pay, forced to purchase items, Mr. Chairman, with what was known as script. $5 coin that he received. Didn't receive U.S. currency, but he received minor script, forced to go to a company store. He was an indentured servant. If they were still alive today, would I go to them and say, you don't realize that you had white privilege? I think not. Attorney General Dave Yost provided a legal review of the, and opinion relative to Resolution 20, which, not for lack of time, he did have concerns with that resolution. A couple of weeks ago, I had an opportunity to uh, debate Dr. Jeffries of Ohio State, a, um, has a doctorate in history, and he used a term that's been said here, but it's not been said at this light. It's, he referred to it as hard history, teaching all the facts. For example, March of 1857, the Dred Scott decision, a seven and two majority, those seven were primarily six were Democrats, one was a member of the Whig Party, the two that voted in favor of Dred Scott in that decision were Republicans. Democrats were the primary members of the KKK. Lyndon Johnson needed to cut deals with the Republicans in 1964 regarding the uh, Civil Rights Act. Does racism exist, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely, it exists. It has existed throughout the history of man in the United States. Japanese Americans will tell you, history uh, that uh, racism existed during World War II when they were sent to detention camps. Native American Indians will tell you it existed in 1830 with the Trail of Tears. Irish immigrants in the mid-1850s will tell you that it existed. Louis Farrakhan in 1994 referred to, made this statement. He says, murder and lying comes easy for white people. He also stated in 2000, white people are potential humans they haven't evolved yet. Does it exist? It absolutely exists. And it should be not tolerated in any form, in any form. 
History related to slavery should be taught in a classroom, just as the before mentioned history of the Japanese, Native Americans, and Irish should be taught. The bill encourages the teaching of history. Call it hard history. I provided a book to all members of this committee, the Bulletproof George Washington. That is a book, and the significant history is something that was taught up until the early 1930s, Mr. Chairman. They stopped teaching that. Why? Because it was not politically convenient to teach. Mr. Stover, I, I, I'm about ready to conclude, if I may. Finish this last sentence, please. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm about ready to finish here. In concluding, let me just state this. In the uh, book of uh, Matthew, we read, when Jesus basically stated, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is what we need to be teaching our students. And I urge passage of House Bill 327 by this committee, and I'm happy to answer any questions Will you questions take questions uh, now?